It's been sitting like this for two weeks. I finally got the new liners in, new bearings. And I'm going to show you how to install them and how to adjust them. I made sure no water or dust or anything get inside the compartment, so I use a trash bag and use the tarp when there is more stuff underneath this to keep the compartment clean. It's a good idea to leave the oil inside, uh, this way you protect it from moisture and rust and uh, you clean it only when you're ready to put the new material back in. Everything clean and ready to go in. I marked these when I took them out and this is how they came out. So probably easy to figure how it's supposed to go. It's centric, you should apply pressure, but this way it will make it way easier than try to figure it out. And I also mark this. I rebuilt this a few months back when I put it in the first time. Uh, they still good, I tested them, so just leave them alone. Very clean. This is the brake adjuster that can be adjusted from outside the compartment. I'll show you where the bolt is. I backed it all the way out so I could freshly adjusted. I did this on both sides. I also uh, slide the disc, the brake disc in so I could put the stationary part in easier. It won't fit the other way. And uh, once this done then I slide the clutch this way so I could put the clutch stationary part in. And this where the adjuster screw for the clutch the adjuster screws if uh, this put uh, together and need to be readjusted this cover could come out and it can be reached from inside and those uh, the lock for the clutch adjuster the brake adjusters these bolts right there and they have this big lock nut to lock them in place
the stationary or the backup shoe had been installed and uh, now it's time to install the tubular part that one apply brake or a clutch to the disc it's good idea to inspect the bearings those needle bearings They are the B2616. However, this is in good shape. To replace them, uh, there's a plug underneath the dozer. It can be taken out, and then the bearing will be pushed to inside, and then a new one installed, and the a plug put back in. Okay, now I'm ready to install the eccentric shafts. I'm gonna put them the same way they came out, one for each side. It's a good idea to inspect the bearing surfaces. They're all good. I actually check them with caliber and they all good and they rotate very easily. And the bearings they free and clean. Then goes the thrust washers. Next, we're gonna install the tubular shoe. And this is how the pressure applied when it turn by the hydraulic cylinder it will apply pressure on the clutch or apply pressure on the brake The one back there actually I forgot I have to take it out because there is hose right above it so I have to kind of assemble it and then put it in place. This other centric shaft and the tubular shoe I cannot put it directly down because there is hoses over here in the way. So what I did is put some apply some grease on the thrust washer. Stick it. in now we have to put the top thrust washers uh, really there is no right way or wrong way either way they're gonna go they precision so they just the spacers don't worry about put them either way I 
like I said, I check the bearing, make sure all the mating surfaces clean, no dust or oil or anything on them. same thing on the other side We make sure when we tie the bolts, we snug all of them in, and then we tie them in X fashion. This way, it apply equal pressure on the plate, so it will seat it. It should seat perfectly. I torqued all the bolts to 60 foot pound. Make sure all of them free. I marked these when I took them out, which one for where, and they also have uh, marking on them for their relationship with the eccentric shaft. And now I'm ready to install these. When I repack these cylinders, I had to uh, make a homemade tool to uh, open this cover and to put it back in it's very simple it's made out of scrap metal one inch by three eight and I made a hinge over here so it can be adjusted to different size cylinder cover welded this piece to one and these two pieces to the other and that's allow it to close and open I cut 516 grade 8 bolt just the shaft I cut the thread and the head and I welded it. I put two pin. I thought maybe one of them, one side may bend or something, but it's strong enough. I was able to open this cylinder and close it very easy, both of them. It's very simple and easy. I'm ready to install the actuator. This is the hardest one because there is 
hoses right above it. So I'm going to blow them up. I want to make sure I put it back exactly the same way I took it out. I put the actuators in, made sure the mark is how it was before I took it out. Same here, same here. I also marked them, put one mark here, two mark here, four, three. This way everything go back the same way it came out. I'm ready to install the keepers. They easy. They just lock rings. There is a groove over here on the centric shaft to keep this from coming out. Make sure it's seated in good. The ring will go there and we'll keep the actuator in place. There's a groove right here. I'm ready to adjust the clutch. The manual asks from this surface to this surface over here to this corner to be between 7 and 5 feet, 7 and 3 quarter. So I'm gonna apply pressure and tighten the bolt over here. Seven and three quarter. After we set the distance for the clutch or adjust the clutch, we need to install the locking plate. It should go on the top of the adjuster screw and it get tied over here.
We're going to do the same thing to the other side. I installed the equalizer blade. The manual actually states that this should go before the actuators, but because the situation I have here with the hoses, it's difficult to do that. So I was able to walk it in uh, from this side first and then put it there. There is a long pin that should go here. That's it. And on this side, this connect to the brake pedal. There's a cutter pin to keep it in place. So I'm gonna put it in and install the cutter pin. I put the retaining pin and the equalizer plate is secure right now in place. This pin over here is stay in place uh, by gravity and by the cover. The cover won't allow it to come out. When you apply the brake, this equalizer plate will pull this way so it will activate both the brake and it will equalize the pressure on both of them. Next thing we need to do, we need to adjust the brake adjuster screws on both sides and we start by uh, losing the linkage for the brake uh, pedal. This way we make sure uh, there is no other forces other than uh, the adjuster screw and uh, the actuator. So we could do it on both sides the exact same way. This is the brake linkage. There is nut over here and nut over there. And this allows us to lose it. I'm gonna do this off camera, it's very simple. Both the clutches been adjusted. I tied the locking plate for the clutch bolts to prevent it from coming loose. I achieve the clearance requested by the manual, which is seven and three quarter on both sides. With this bolt out. Next, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna adjust the brake bolt. This bolt outside. I'm gonna tie it until there is no more play. So basically just apply a pressure on it, push against the clutch actuator and there will be no play. And then I'm gonna back the bolt out a quarter turn. This will ensure I have enough clearance between the shoe and the disc. I tied the brake bolts until there's no more play. And now I'm gonna lose it about a quarter turn to have a clearance. So I should be able to just move the brake disc forward and backward a little bit. I set the brake bolt and I tied the jam nut on both sides. With no spring install over here, you should have just this much play. Less than an eighth clearance.
it's actually enough for clearance too. I have little blade over here. When I release the clutch, I could move the disc. That's how it should be set. Now we install the spring. After we finish adjust the brake on both sides, we need to make sure this bolt doesn't move, especially when we try to tie the jam nut. Uh, there's one of two ways to achieve this. One is to use one and a half inch wrench here and three quarter inch wrench here, and then uh, keep the three quarter inch from moving and tie the inch and a half uh, wrench to tie this nut or we could apply the brake this way this will become harder to move and then you sock it and tie this inch and a half nut I adjusted the brake pedal I don't have a stop mechanical stop on it except this cover it act as a stop there is nothing I could find in the design process to have mechanical stop. I thought to build something and bolt it here before, but it's been like this for 40 years since they designed it, so and it's all good. Everything adjusted. I'm ready to install the plug and fill it with oil. I put some silicone on it to make sure it doesn't leak. Filled it with oil. ready to put the cover in <clears throat> I'm gonna apply some grease and there's a rubber gasket over here and grease on top of it and put the cover on apply the grease on both sides of the gasket it's rubber gasket it's not necessary to put silicone cover ready to go in all the bolts in none of them is tied there's a quiet bit of play we need to make sure this is center with the piston so we could install the extension tube I install a new o-ring on all these extensions and I apply some silicone seven eight socket Just go back and double check after a few minutes. It's 
very tight. Next step is to tie the cover. Like I said, make sure it's center. all the hoses I apply just a little bit silicone over here uh, it will help seal those so water won't get inside and uh, it also protect the thread I change these hoses when I uh, rebuild the dozer.
I add the tarab over there on the boots to squeeze the rubber in addition to the silicone. I push the fuel tank and hold it in position with this bar. That's it. I had to bend this inch and a half wrench to be able to work the gem nut for the brake. And this is all the tools that I use. 7-8 socket, 3 quarter socket, tape measure, 916 wrench, silicone, channel lock, hammer, screwdriver, 3 quarter wrench, 15-16, 11-16 for the fuel line, inch and eight for the tank. These wrenches the screws over here on the side for the cover. There is no other tool could reach there other than this. 916, three quarter. 916, 916, 8, and pry bar to clean the mud. I'm not gonna start it till tomorrow, give the silicone time to dry, and it should be good. Everything in place, time for the test drive. <laughs> 